Let's go to two other topics and trying to put other people, not oncologists, out of business in the management of rectal cancer. So first is the prospect study, which is designed to put radiation oncologists out of business. Everybody either participating or playing in on that. So randomizing patients between chemo first, the full FOX approach, if response, then go right on to surgery. If not response, chemo RT, then to surgery versus the traditional approach. We're about done, right? We've only got about 50 more patients, I think, is where we are before that study uh, will close and report out. Is it going to take a certain amount of benefit, or is a tie good enough to, to uh, win? If, the, if there's no difference in PFS and local control, is radiation done, Marlon? I think so. I mean, uh, <laughs> what, what more do we need? What if it's a little need? worse? <laughs> what if it's a little worse? You know, we're, we're, you know it'll be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, that, a tie is a win. Yeah. It's a very important study, and I think uh, I really kudos to the managers and organizers of that. They really pulled that. Yeah, study and again, off. I think it gets back to this biomarker um, issue as well. I mean, hopefully, we'll have some mm -hmm. uh, circulating tumor DNA data or um, some data from the tumors themselves to really help um, guide us and make a more clear recommendation, personalized. I and also, in sorry. oh, sorry, in defense of the radiation oncologists, you know, we, we need to pay attention to how many patients had to, you know, yeah. go off study because of lack of response to get radiation. Because mm -hmm. if we just mm -hmm. wholesale say no more radiation and ignore that, then that, that's not, that that's important not covered branch by this trial. Yeah. Yeah. I think we also have to take into consideration the types of patients mm -hmm. who participated in PROSPECT. Uh, PROSPECT was, again, a study for not very distal tumors, were middle, middle of the rectum. Right. Um, the, the lymph node status, um, I think they had a 10 millimeter as a criteria for node positive. Everything else was considered node negative. You couldn't be too close to the fascia, to the mesorectal fascia. I think that it was a, over, overall a better prognosis type of patient enrolled in prospect. And I think we have to, again, always be very careful and critical on the details uh, when we see the results. Couldn't agree more. The, the group that makes me the most uncomfortable is this transanal local excision group. The, the T1s, the T2s, I'm seeing more and more people um, with even higher stage disease, T3s, getting some sort of neoadjuvant, you know, local mm -hmm. resection, mm -hmm. neoadjuvant chemo RT, and observation. Anybody else uncomfortable with this? Mark? I am very uncomfortable with T3 uh, and, and even T2. I mean, we, we know the data from, from years ago that even with T1s, if you follow these patients up to 10 years, you know, you get up to almost an 8, 10 percent re relapse rate. And, and I think you can still make a case for, for the T1s who are well differentiated uh, in somebody where you want to do a sphincter saving procedure. Uh, even in those patients, we consider them in our practice for, for, for chemo radiation following excision. Uh, I think it's, it's hard to extrapolate to a residual disease now from the watchful waiting strategy because the watchful waiting strategy, first of all, it has not been validated fully, and it's for patients with complete response. Mm. So, uh, you know, to, to me, T2, T3 resection uh, is, is experimental. Um, you know, of course, the patient can reject surgery, right. and then what else can you do? Well, it's sort of what Wells was saying earlier. I mean, I've got patients that say, I'd rather be dead than have an ostomy, right? And so, okay, here's what we can do. And, um, and, and the extension, what Myron was saying, is so you give the chemo first, you maybe do chemo RT, and then they have a complete endoscopic response, right? So you can't see anything. And there's this decision to just watch and wait that patient. Yeah. What's the path CR? What would you quote a patient? to their path CR rate of chemo, chemo RT? Sort of in the ballpark of 20, 25%. Yeah. I think uh, the key there from my standpoint is I really go over with the patient. It's an extremely busy follow-up schedule. Mm -hmm. You have to have a very compliant patient who can take a lot of days off work and come in to get all of the scopes, the scans, the exams that are necessary to follow those patients. And so to me, that's really one of the critical branch points. You're right, but you know that, what that means, of course, is 80% of people don't have that kind of response. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dr. Google tells you everyone's going to get that response, and so you have to be a little bit careful about expectations. But following that, I think really being uh, trying to make sure that the patient's going to be able to uh, follow up with that plan, because if, if they don't, some of that blame's going to be on you a little bit in terms of uh, non-operative management. If the patient's not followed properly, I think it's always hard as physicians to not feel some of the blame for that if it does come back. Gabby, let me ask you a pretty specific question. Let's say you had a patient who had a transanal excision with like a T2 lesion, um, and then they, they don't want surgery. 
Is that a patient you're recommending radiation to, or is it watchful waiting for the T2? Um, so the patient... Ne imaging negative. I'll give you that. The patient received uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy? No, no. Or just a transanal excision a, of a low rectal I cancer. would feel very uncomfortable not offering chemoradiation to that chemo patient, so uh, we would recommend chemoradiotherapy. I see you nodding. Everybody there? I, th you know, I think th that's a difficult, we, we don't, again, no data really to tell us what to do, just odds of lymph node involvement and, and an attempt to increase local control. Uh, but then it's back to the consequences of the radiation, the pelvic RT. So there are, it's not an, an, a nothing issue. But I, and, and surgeons are increasingly amazing about how they're able to do these low hookups uh, and the like. So um, I tend to try and discourage this whenever I can. I kind of am the old fuddy-duddy in, in this space, but I totally get I have some patients that we're following uh, now with this. But uh, the Wild West of rectal cancer. Thanks. That was a great review, everybody.